All right, guys, so just getting done uh, recording the vlog here. I'm going to throw this in as my part three, uh, my post-race analysis. This is a few days after the fact, so I've had time to calm down uh, since the trip. Of course, Alex loved the trip, uh, first and foremost, so we both did. Uh, it was a really cool experience just to be there in person. Uh, Bristol Motor Speedway, I've been waiting since I was a little kid. Uh, to go there and just re-watching like all the videos here at the last second it, it's really cool uh, uh i'm not gonna lie <laughs> it's a it's a great experience and i can't wait until the next race i get to go down uh to and i can't wait to go back to bristol sometime for the bristol night race that is for sure maybe it'll be coming this year if i can't get to darlington or something like that so uh uh yeah darlington uh for the southern 500 is supposed to be my next uh go um, hopefully it doesn't get moved like a bunch of other races earlier this year. I can hope for the best. So no races I'm going to go to in the regular season because, uh, my home track, Michigan, of course, uh, there are no fans in attendance for the doubleheader there. So I'm a little, uh, disappointed with that, but, uh, it is what it is. Um, better luck next year. And, um, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get to Darlington, Talladega and Martinsville for the playoff races. Uh, so after that, here is my post-race analysis for the Bristol All-Star Race. Also a race and the Open for that matter. So we started things off in the Open. Stage 1, drama early on between Michael McDowell and Bubba Wallace. Wallace put a bump and run move on Michael McDowell. And about a half a straightaway later, he hooks a left and right hooks Bubba Wallace into the outside wall. Uh, he T-boned the outside wall going into turn 3. Bubba Wallace's night ended. Uh, any hopes of him even getting a fan vote were over at that point in time. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. I I get bump and runs happen. I can get a driver being upset, but that early into a race, and uh, he it was just a bonehead move. He almost took out William Byron, who was an innocent bystander and all that too. Byron was just trying to fill the gap after Wallace uh, had moved McDowell up. Uh, it's a classic short track move. And uh, McDowell was a slower car, and he was holding him up. And it's a sense of urgency in a race like this when you have, you know, less than 40 laps at Bristol. And at that time, is less than 30 laps uh, left in the open. Wallace thought he might have even had a chance to catch Eric Almirola. Uh It was early in the race. He didn't want Eric to get away from him. It was just not a good call for Bubble or uh, for uh, Michael McDowell there. Uh, looked like a really bad move. He ended up damaging his own car <laughs> on top of it, so it took himself out of any sort of uh, chances in the following couple stages to get into the All-Star race. So it is a really bonehead move by Michael McDowell. We had a simultaneous spin as well. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek and, oh, man, I can't remember exactly who it was. Again, this is three days after the fact, so uh, sorry for that. Uh, but they had a spin uh, in Stage 2. Um, pretty much calm outside of the restarts were crazy. Uh, throughout all three stages in the open and even the all-star race for that matter uh, your all-star race or I should say your open race winners uh, Eric Almirola won stage one William Byron won stage two Matt Benedetto won stage three and Clint Boyer got the fan vote uh, so I thought Bubba Wallace was going to get the fan vote obviously he got wrecked uh, had no chance at that uh, they said Clint Boyer had gotten it regardless of the fact um, so uh, I guess it didn't matter that Bubba Wallace crashed in the sense of the fan vote, but he couldn't race his way in, that was for sure. Uh, I did pick Matt Benedetto to win one of the open stages, uh, but I had Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick in. Uh, uh, Bell was back and forth, Reddick was about mid-pack the entire open, didn't really perform as well, so I definitely didn't have Eric Almirola or William Byron. Should have known, I mean, Almirola's on a hot streak, I should have uh, put him in there. Uh, William Byron, I uh, did not think, honestly, he was going to contend uh, that well compared to some other guys that have been uh, running a little faster in recent weeks. But uh, Byron got the job done to get into the All-Star race. And then once the All-Star race came, uh, it was a pretty fun time. Uh, it was a good race. It wasn't a great race uh, like most people might have been expecting, including myself. Uh, but it was a good race. It was great for me. And I'm going to say it was a great race simply because I was there in person. Anytime you go to a race live in person, no matter how you know boring it might be on TV, um, you know, there in person, it is always great. It's phenomenal. Top of the charts. Uh, so that's the way I think about it there. But if I was watching on TV, I would have said it was a good race. Maybe not a great race, uh, especially by Brind uh, Bristol standards. Uh, um, I don't want to say this was the worst Bristol race I've seen in years, but uh, it, it just it lacked a little bit. And I'm going to go through some of these things so uh especially being there live in person for one granted i've never been to a short track race before uh as far as nascar goes 
So uh, that was definitely unique. Um, and you could tell it was good old fashioned short track racing, you know, but the, the top groove at Bristol, which has uh, become synonymous, sorry, uh, with Bristol Motor Speedway over the last couple of years is that you can get two distinct grooves. Well, there was no rubber laid down from a truck or an Xfinity race beforehand. So you had a green racetrack for the open guys and the open guys all together, what it was a, an 80 lap, 80 lap open, uh, and only half the cars. So not a lot of rubber on the track. Most of the rubber was laid down on the bottom groove, which already had the PJ1 beforehand. Uh, so not a lot of grip up high. By the end of the All-Star race, you saw guys being able to work the outside lanes a little bit more. And they were coming in, I think, maybe about another 50 to 100 laps, which is a lot. But at Bristol, not so much. Uh, another 50 to 100 laps. I think the outside groove would have been perfect. And it would have been uh, very, very fun to watch. Uh, that battle. Kyle Busch was kind of getting the runs needed there at the very end of the race uh, to try and close in on Chase Elliott. He just ran out of time. Uh, so that was unfortunate there. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Chase Elliott gets the win, gets the million dollars. Blaney looked fast early on. His tire strategy didn't pay off for him. Uh, kind of the trend with Ryan Blaney when it comes to uh, Bristol Motor Speedway is off to a great start, and as the track slowly starts to add rubber, it's like they don't have the setup uh, quite there, no matter what the track conditions are exactly are uh, for later in the race if they're ahead or in the top part of the field competing for a win like they were. Harvick looked fast, too. His pit strategy at the very end was very interesting. If they would have gotten a late race caution those last couple laps, I think Kevin Harvick would have been the guy to beat there. Uh, with those fresh tires, he went from about mid-pack uh, all the way up to third in 15 laps at Bristol. That's insane. That's what, like six minutes at the most? No, that's less than that. That's like four minutes, five minutes. That's crazy. Crazy run uh, there, and uh, Kyle Busch had a great restart, too. I knew if Kyle Busch could get a great restart, uh, he would have a chance because I was kind of keeping an eye on him. He was working his way slightly through the field, but with Chase Elliott having the number one position uh, to start that final stage, uh, as long as he nailed the restart, which he did, he was going to be tough to beat, and that seemed to be the case there. Uh, Kyle Busch, uh, if he maybe would have went to the top a little bit quicker, maybe he would have had a shot at Chase Elliott, but Elliott did have the fastest car uh, throughout the course of the race, so the fastest car, fastest driver at Bristol got the win that day. Um, yeah, uh, it was again, it was a fun experience. Not a lot with this uh, post-race uh, breakdown, uh, not only because it's a couple days after the fact, but um, they will be day after the fact even when uh, I start traveling uh, to other races and doing more vlogs. Uh, the reason why I wasn't worried about getting this one out is simply because um, it, it wasn't a points race, so I didn't have to break down any fantasy stuff. Uh, that's the same thing with the predictions video as well uh, that was actually done uh, the day of the race, as uh, you guys will see or are seeing. Uh, by the time this one will be out. Uh, so this will be the final video of the vlog to finish things off and uh, put uh, the last chapter to rest uh, for my trip to Bristol Motor Speedway. Uh, my first trip, at least. I definitely plan on being back there again in the future for the night race. That is for certain. Uh, but until then, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, subscribe for more daily NASCAR content. Hit the like button down below. Uh, if you enjoyed the race, what were your guys' thoughts on the All-Star Race? I know it was a couple days ago, but I'd still like to hear what you guys thought. And uh, I'll be back again. Uh, Texas is coming up here tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I'll see you guys uh, for predictions, post-race analysis then. And uh, so long, folks.